All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews. We're back with more Friends from College, Season 2. We are already at Episode 5. It's called Old Habits. So full spoilers if you've not seen the episode. Um, again, gotta say, I, I really do like it uh, when they separate the group and give everybody something to do. Um, and this continues it. We've got breakups and possible hookups and... Way, new ways of thinking and people trying to get things that they want. There's a lot going on in this episode. And uh, let's just start with Lisa. So I thought that there would be karma down the road or, you know, this thing with Charlie would blow up in her face later, but it blows up right away. <laughs> so they're trying to have this kid. Uh, they're not married, but she's just kind of in that... She's panicking, I feel like. You know, she, she's, she, the thing with, you know, Ethan and her's marriage didn't work out, but she still wants a kid. She's found a willing person to give her a kid. And Charlie, who is being a really good sport. And okay, so what guy wouldn't want to have sex, you know, six times in 25, 24 hours? But. Uh, once she gives him the performance enhancing pills and, you know, there's just, there's only so much you can, so many times you can do it <laughs> that, you know, I thought he was going to have a heart attack and it just isn't happening. And then they get into the conversation, the conversation where it's marriage and babies, you know, why don't we get married? Well, I'm not ready for that. Well, then why are we having a kid? Because uh, I can't wait. Well, then we should get married. So it pretty much fizzles like that. And it's just, it's crazy how quickly things can end like that. That you can be in bed having a marathon sex session to have a kid. And five minutes later, you're done. Uh, and I've seen things like that happen. I, I, but I feel like it's, I don't know. Maybe it happens in real life. I've never broken up with somebody that quickly. Um, <laughs> but so now she's back to square one. And Charlie really didn't want to break up with her. But if she's not ready to get married, see, this is the thing. You know, you rushed it. You didn't think it through. And I mean, it was just destined to be this way because I still feel because of what happens later. Now, maybe this won't work out either because things are just not working out for Lisa at all she's really getting the short end of the stick in a lot of things but she's, you know going uh pushing a new relationship about with kids this quickly like i know she says that there's a biological imperative like a time imperative but she's only in her like she's in her 30s she's not you know you know done with the ability to have kids yet even though it has been difficult for them, you know. I mean, I, I can't speak to how that feels like, what that feels like, not just, you know, being a guy and not having ovaries. It's like the, not having the ability to give birth. But, I, you know, but then we get to Nick and Meryl, who, uh, it's a nice little segue here, that he and Meryl are going on this trip to, like, whatever, the fucking Hamptons, or, you know, where... Uh, everybody's named Meryl and Morgan, um, out there in Wasp Town. I, ugh. <laughs> I thought we were stepping into like one of the, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like there's a Kennedy joke later on in this episode and it just like families like that just creep me out. This old this old name kind of thing, this old money kind of thing. And it just makes me wonder, like, the gene pool, the how much uh, these people are pretty close-knit. makes me wonder how much uh, the gene pool has been tainted, if you know what I'm saying. Um, maybe mixed up a little too much. If I, there's that many people named Marilyn Morgan, that's just uh, uh, creepy. Um, maybe think of Wedding Crashers for some reason, too. But Nick is trying. Nick is really trying. I mean, this is way, you know, this is where, like, Lisa says later, like, this kind of feels like how you should have ended up. 
Um, you know, which leads me to that point where Lisa calls Nick because she tries to stay with Marianne. And now, of course, Marianne's got her own like weird thing going on with Tag and his base jumping team. So she doesn't really want to stay there. So Nick inviting her to come out there to, you know, hang out at this party. It was one of those situations where you ask, but you don't expect that person to actually say yes. So when she says yes, he's kind of stuck. I mean, uh, he could have said, well, look, I, <laughs> you got me. You know what I mean? Like, you could have just been, like, honest and been like, look, you had me in a corner. I don't know what. I didn't expect you to say yes. I didn't really shouldn't have offered, you know. But that's not what they wanted to do. They had a plan for this story. So, of course, she goes. This puts a rift between her and uh, in between Meryl and Nick because that's where they want this story to go. Um, and she's, you know, here's the thing. I've, I've said that Meryl's a B-I-T-C-H. I don't know why I'm, she's a bit, that, but you know what? She's really not a bitch. <laughs> she's just, she's doing her thing. She's living her life and trying to make Nick a part of it. And if Nick, can, you know, if it is rude to bring somebody along and he, should have told Lisa to stay home. So she's she's not really doing anything wrong. And she may be a bit of a snob, but she's, you know, that's her right, I guess. Um, but throughout this whole thing, um, they weren't right for each other. We all knew this. This is just, like, kind of funny because wasn't Sarah Chalky one of the, yeah, Ted's, Almost, you know, where you thought maybe she'd be the mother. Of course, she's not the mother. She's just another one of the girls before the mother on How You Met Your Mother. And here's Kobe Smulders from the same show. In And um, what I'm trying to get to, what I'm trying to get to the point of is that Meryl's just an, another girl before Nick and Lisa get together is what I'm trying to say. It just so happens that they were both in the same show. <laughs> Jesus. It's been a long day. I even questioned whether or not I should do this review because I'm really tired. Um, but when Lisa sees Nick having a moment of affection with Meryl, I think at that moment she felt bad and then she decided that she, I, I do think that she, what she says to Nick later wasn't entirely without motive. Um, but maybe I'm wrong because when she tells him like, you know, when we were dating and I always thought that, you know, you would end up with some prep school prom queen and that kind of thing and that this is where you belong. And then she just really bluntly segues into, um, you know, I'm lost, I'm nowhere. I just want to be with somebody who actually loves me, you know, and that kind of thing. And they were a thing. And I kind of feel like it wasn't a non too subtle hint. Maybe it's not though. Maybe she was just kind of, saying it off the cuff, but I, I don't feel like that's, maybe she thinks she's being off the cuff, but I think she's trying to say something. And so that leads Nick to just break, you know, break up, not break up with Meryl, trying to make it sound like it could be her idea so that he doesn't look like the bad guy. But there's no way around this. And he looks like the bad guy. I do like that they, I, they got to dip out of there. Uh, really quickly and so it looks like Nick is gonna try to start something with uh, Lisa which I've said in the in the first season reviews um, that that's it's obvious that where the plots headed in this and that's fine I don't mind it being a little obvious just as long as it's written well so that's Lisa and Nick's story and Mary Ann's story she doesn't really get anything to do in this except call some guy named Skull a bitch or something like that uh, eat shit, Skull, that's what she says. Um, so now we get to Ethan, Max, and Sam's part of the story. So Sam and Ethan are trying to be friends. Let's let's just face it, that was going to turn into a makeout session pretty quickly once he realizes that she actually likes the Centaur book, Centaur, whatever, um, book that he wrote. And so it comes down to now that we're single and this isn't an affair, we can do whatever we want. And there's that awkwardness of 20 years of sneaking around. Um, how do you actually go out with each other legitimately? And that's what's something that Sam has to consider, you know, going forward was why were they doing this in the first place? 
and the therapist, her therapist, does at least get her to admit that Ethan was her escape, and you know now that they can do whatever they want in the open, you know the thrill is gone. Sneaking around and all that stuff was all part of the excitement of it, and now they're just boring, trying to be a boring couple. And is that enough? Um, and with Ethan and Max, Max bummed that Ethan's not taking uh, these pitch meetings about you know the Centaur book series uh, seriously. But here's the thing: Ethan doesn't want to write about centaurs. He's doing it for the paycheck. Max seems to be the one really psyched about it. He is trying to help his friend. And in so doing, he's doing a lot of the extra work because Ethan, otherwise, maybe Ethan won't get work. And so I, I do think that this is a little silly there. The fact that Max wants some credit, fine. Uh, does he want some extra compensation? Fine. Just ask for it. This, they're adults. Ask for what you want instead of this, you know, running around thing. I mean, why did they even go to the part where it was like, why don't we write a book together? Just so that they can do both do crazy voices, which is fine. They're just funny, and Felix creeping around there, which I'm glad they you know mentioned. Um, it's 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 nice that Max is still in the season trying to stand up for himself, especially when it comes to Ethan. But come on, and like just guys, you gotta just man up, literally, and just say what you want, because. Ethan doesn't give a shit about these books. He's just writing them to pay the bills. So, you know, if they're making enough money and Ethan, Ethan can find some money to give Max for it without going broke, then that's all they have to do. Uh, the whole VR headset thing is kind of funny. I mean, watching everybody watch a parade, I don't know. I've never even worn a VR headset yet. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid I'll break something in my house. <laughs> Because I tend to be really animated. Well, just when I'm sitting down playing a game. Imagine if I'm up, you know, trying to play VR. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So they, uh, in the end, Sam goes to Ethan's house. And it's a first step in that direction to where let's try to have a normal relationship. And they end the episode with that. Who is that? The the Wallflowers? Ugh. One of the worst song choices. <laughs> I hated the Wallflowers in the 90s. So anyway, it, everybody's taking serious steps in, their, in the directions that they're headed. Lisa's, Lisa and Nick are on the cusp of something uh, new. Uh, Ethan and Sam are trying the old thing, but in a new way. Max is trying to get Ethan to give him credit, uh, be a better friend. And uh, Marianne's Marianne. So I like that. We've got three more episodes left. I'm excited to see where they're going with it. I'm probably not going to do another episode until tomorrow. I'm going to try to uh, do these like one more, one a day. Uh, so six, seven, and eight will be like, so I'll finish eight on Thursday. Maybe sooner, I don't know, because I'm, I'm thinking about watching The Passage tonight just to see how bad that piece of shit is going to probably be. But uh, otherwise, uh, then we have The Punisher coming out on Friday. So these will be wrapped up by Thursday, perhaps earlier. So if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that rigmarole. This is Robert Smirking Gun Review saying have a great night, and we will see you next time.